In this video, I'm giving my top 10 tips to get you proficient with 5-axis milling using Fusion 360 and Pocket NC. If you're watching this video, chances are you've got experience using 3-axis CNC machines and now you're ready for more because more axis is better, right? What? Well, it can be. It also adds lots of challenges and complexities that you'll need to face to fully utilize. This video will cover the top 10 things to get you up and going fast with 5-axis milling on the Pocket NC. Some of these items are obvious, others are more profound. Either way, it's a list of things I wish I knew before I embarked on learning to use the Pocket NC. A quick, pragmatic list of need-to-know things that will set your expectations and save you a lot of headaches. And with that, let's get started. 1. Label your machine for success. Getting familiar with the machine, you'll likely refer to each access both virtually and physically and when designing or jogging the machine. To help you master them, put labels on the machine access. The visual reference will save you lots of time without referring to the manual or testing movements before committing. It'll become ingrained in your mind and before you know it, you can take off the wheels and send it. There are several ways to go about it. You can get a label maker, a printable adhesive paper, even post-its. Alternatively, I've created a sticker you can purchase in my YouTube channel store. I'll also make the graphic available to download and print it yourself. 2. Don't overthink 5-axis. 90% of the 3-axis operations you already know will continue to be your bread and butter. But where a 5-axis machine shines is its ability to reorient the part to accommodate any work orientation. This will save you a ton of time in fixturing and setup. And while the 5 axis of the Pocket NC will give you lots of theoretical possibility for operations, don't get the misconception that it's even needed or even a capability of your CAM software. If you're using Fusion 360, then some basic multi-axis operations are implemented to support some of those advanced capabilities. But just know that Fusion 360 is evolutionary and changing all the time. Currently, Fusion 360 CAM is going through an identity crisis, and while you'll find multi-axis capabilities implemented in different areas, its reliability is limited to very specific and basic configurations with the generated toolpaths lacking any dependable performance that you'd expect from a 3-axis operation. Their methodology over the last six years has demonstrated that they'll get there eventually, but it's going to take some time and expect it to be a little bit uncomfortable. For now, stick to the incredible benefit of performing multiple off-axis operations as that alone is worth the Pocket NC. 3. Use table and fixture models in Fusion 360. Now, Pocket NC provides Fusion 360 models for all of their table options, and while it's an incredibly easy way to test and simulate our operations, there are a few things to look out for. For one, you'll need to be sure that you update the machine origin offset in these models to ensure that they reflect your machine's calibrated point of rotation. It's really easy to do and will ensure that your toolpaths get generated correctly. The last thing to ensure is that the model origin is in the correct axial orientation to the machine work coordinate system home. That's a piece of cake. If the z-axis is off to the right and the y-axis is up and the x is to the back, then you're good to go. Four, create projects for your cam setup. I know this sounds redundant, but it'll provide lots of flexibility and benefits over embedding everything in your design project. By dropping your part and platform into a new project, it'll afford you the freedom to orient your part without concern for affecting design dependencies or references. I've found in using Fusion 360 to protect yourself from design lock-in, this abstraction helps keep things loosely coupled. When you bring in your platform model, it should be in the correct orientation, so as long as you don't change that, you should be good to go. It can help to ground the object to prevent it from being moved. Just be sure that the object remains selectable, as you'll be needing to reference it in your tool operation setups, which is in the next one. 5. Using your machine work coordinate system 0 in your setups. Creating setups and defining stock is easy, but to ensure toolpath operations generate the correct access movements, the setup needs to reference the work coordinate system's origin from your table or fixture object the machine offset that was just updated earlier. This provides reference to the machine zero and origin for all related toolpath operations. When you set up your operations, if you need to change the axis, you simply update the tool orientation in the geometry tab and you're good to go. This gives the system the relational info required to instruct the machine to move in the correct orientation. As long as you set up these two things correctly, the five axis magic will happen automatically, moving and changing orientation as needed. In addition to the machine origin, you'll want to identify the fixture and attachment using the Pocket NC platform object you've got linked in your drawing. This will prevent operations from colliding or generating impossible movements. 6. Use HSM Advisor and a Pocket NC machine definition for easy feeds and speeds. If you haven't seen the video I did on HSM Advisor, be sure to check that out. 
I've created a Pocket NC machine profile which can be downloaded from the HSM Advisor cloud for immediate use. Be sure to import your Pocket NC tools into Fusion 360, then import those tools directly into HSM Advisor. By doing so, you'll be set up for easy calculation of feeds and speeds and be using the actual tools from Fusion 360 without having to redefine them. 7. Adding reference planes and objects. Be sure to supplement your part models with empty components to identify off-axis operations, orientations that you anticipate on needing. You'll also find value in using objects and sketches to isolate your machine area and control where the tool is able to mill. Enabling multi-axis on operations gives the solver more freedom to mill in dynamic orientations, but in some cases, too much freedom. You'll want to use objects and sketches to restrict the operation limits. Sure, you can use no-touch touch surfaces on the geometry tab of the operation, but often that won't be enough to restrict tool movements when you have multi-axis freedom. Adding empty components is useful to identify new origins as reference to operations. Simply create the new component, then make the component's origin visible, then of course reorient it however you need to. In your operation, you'll simply reference the origin in the Tool Orientation section of the Geometry tab. 8. Which operations support multi-axis? Well, it's a bit confusing. For starters, all 2D and 3D operations will work on the tool orientation axis as they always have. But there are several hidden multi-axis features. For example, most 2D operations can work in a fourth axis to create rotational movements on a cylinder. To enable that capability, your object needs to be a cylinder with pockets. Then you can simply go into the Geometry tab and select Wrap to Cylinder. Select the desired pockets, and tool paths are generated as you would expect, wrapped around a cylindrical object. If you're dealing with primitives, this is great, but for surfaces, you're out of luck. Next, a couple of 3D operations offer a multi-axis tilting setting in the Passes tab, which allows the operation to generate the toolpath on a fourth axis, allowing it to follow the normal of a curve as well as adjust the tool lead, lean, and tilt depending on the operation. These all control the perpendicularity of the tool to the face. Is that a word? <coughs> Newer operations like Steep and Shallow offer a tab called Tool Axis, which provides a lot of configurable options on how the operation is generated. This looks to be the best approach, and I hope that we see this tab roll out into other operations as the manufacturer workspace evolves. For all of these operations, you'll want to be sure to enable Shaft and Holder on the Tool tab. This will ensure that the clearances are respected to avoid collisions. 9. Tool Numbers and Offsets In Fusion 360, your Pocket NC tools have default tool numbers assigned to them. And while you can change them, the important thing is that when you post your operations and send them over to the machine, you'll be referencing them programmatically. So when you load your individual tool on the machine, be sure that the tool length offset measurement is being measured to the correct tool bin. Otherwise, the machine could reference the wrong offset, which will ruin your part at least, and then maybe even ruin your day. Side note, if you can use tool callouts, that'll definitely help you in being able to reuse some of those calculated tool length offsets. 10. Lastly, simulate the toolpath. Don't trust yourself, don't trust Fusion 360, use the built-in Fusion 360 cut simulator as the first pass, then post to an NC file and load it up on the Pocket NC simulator. It's located at sim.pocketnc.com, and it'll show you how the machine will see and interpret the toolpath. As you're coming up to speed, accidents will happen, and the last thing you want is to crash the machine. My motto is assume it's bad until it's proven good. I'm always happy. I never worry about anything. Through the course of the creation of this video, I created several objects to work through the principles. You can see them being milled here in these videos along with the final results. They all milled with great results and at the end of the day only used a couple native multi-axis operations. The majority of the benefit was in PocketNC's ability to accommodate over eight different operation orientations to perform the milling without ever being touched, and that's super cool. These models will be made available for you to review and see all the setup and operations that went into them. That's going to do it for this video. Hopefully this list gets you up to speed and thinking about being more efficient using Fusion 360 with your Pocket NC. I'd love to hear your thoughts and what you'd add to this list, so leave them in the comments below. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button and ring that notification bell. It'll help keep you in the loop on future uploads. If you like this particular video, give it a thumbs up. That's kind of how this system works. I've got some cool projects and material coming up, so make sure you check back often, or just stick around, that's cool too. If you have time, go check out social.diy.engineering and interact with me on other networks. It's lots of fun. As always, leave comments, do your thing, be safe, have fun, and I'll see you next time. Hey, if you like the video, please subscribe to the channel. It's how we're building the community. Also, allow me to bring better content. Also, check me out on these other social networks. There's lots of cool stuff there, too.